Hey everybody, it's Greg with rcdriver.com and this is episode number three in our Get Into RC video series. Now in the first video what we talked about was basically turning on and off your RC system and video number two I talked about the different parts of a radio. Now in episode number three I kind of want to tell you how this thing works, okay? A lot of people just think, you know, magic makes your signals go from here over to there. No magic involved, but there's a lot of technology behind it. Okay, so basically we've, we've talked about your radio system, you know your radio system. The radio transmits a signal to the receiver. Now this is the receiver here, this is in your car. Now if you bought a ready to run, this is most likely in your car already. There's uh, cars called almost ready to runs where sometimes you need to purchase a radio system uh, to install in it. Or if you purchased a kit, um, you're probably going to need a radio system. So when you when people talk about radio systems, it's usually the radio and the receiver combined. You buy this as a package. Sometimes a servo is included, and sometimes you are going to need a servo. So you might want to check with your kit. Uh, you know, usually manufacturers do a great job of telling you what you need on the side of the box. So see what your kit needs. Once you, once you figure it out, maybe if you're online, uh, there's there's a requirement section. So definitely check that out. So, so basically this is the radio system right here. Now this uses 2.4 gigahertz technology to transmit a signal over to here. And this receiver picks up those signals. And what I mean by signals is when, when you turn the wheel or when you pull the throttle, the radio system sends a signal of what you're doing over to this box. And this box tells the other components in the car what to do. So this is the receiver. This is the servo. Okay. So when you turn the steering wheel, the signal goes over to the receiver and then it tells the servo, hey, I have to steer left or I have to steer right. So that's kind of the gist of what happens. Now on, this, on the speed controller side, uh, you have a speed controller here. This is kind of a, uh, you know, a standard style speed controller. This is from Castle Creations. There's all different types of speed controllers and manufacturers out there. So when you pull the throttle, the transmitter tells the receiver to uh, manipulate the throttle. So that's kind of how it all works. Now, um, just to back up for a second. So let's say you do get your, your, your radio system and, and you've installed it in your car. Uh, and this, this is even a tip for those of you that have picked up a ready to run. Sometimes you need to bind uh, what we call bind the radio to the receiver. And that's basically just linking the two so they talk to each other. And sometimes there's a bind plug that you need to use. Uh, sometimes there's a button that you have to push and you have to push a button on the radio. Um, most manufacturers, I, pretty much all manufacturers, have excellent instructions on how to bind a radio to the receiver. Now, again, you you may not have to deal with that. Um, it, sometimes they are bound from the factory, sometimes they're not. Nothing to be afraid of. It's a really simple process to, to walk yourself through. And you'll know that your radio isn't bound because you've turned everything on and perhaps the lights on and the receiver, uh, but they're not talking to each other. You're, you're not getting any movements out of the servo. So that's how you know your radio isn't bound. So uh, basically uh, most cars uh, require a two channel radio system. Uh, they have three channel radio systems. There's four channel radio systems. And what that means is, is each, uh, let's say component that you add on to the receiver. So uh, you have a, a steering servo that's uh, uh, channel one, uh, the speed controller is channel two, and those are the primary functions that you use to operate a car with. So let's say you find a three channel radio system, well that third channel would be used for accessories such as uh, you know, a, a light bar or perhaps using a, a winch. So basically uh, channel one uh, is the steering, so uh, I need to tell you this because a lot of people uh, question this when I worked at a hobby shop and a track channel one on your receiver uh, when you're assembling or at, let's say you take your receiver out and, and you forgot where the plugs go channel one is always your steering and what I like to tell people is steering is your priority it's number one priority so that's why it always goes in channel number one uh, and then channel number two is your speed controller uh, always and then channel number three is, uh, you know, again, your accessory, maybe some lights or, or winch or something like that. Um, now let's say you, you skipped nitro or excuse me, you skipped electric and you went right to a nitro car. Nitro is a little bit different. They don't use a speed controller. Uh, 
they use two servos. Here we go, two servos. So here's an example. One is used for the uh, steering. Again, channel one is always steering and channel two is the throttle. So just keep that in mind. If you jump right to nitro, you're gonna need uh, two servos and then uh, most likely a battery pack and a switch. So that kind of completes a two channel radio system for a nitro car. Again, electric car uh, is a servo, the receiver, uh, excuse me, so nitro, let me back up, nitro. Is, is two servos, the receiver, the radio, a battery pack, and most likely a switch. An electric car is, uh, let me get those out of the way. I'll just pile everything up here. So we've got a the radio, receiver, servo for steering, uh, speed controller, and a motor, which that's a castle creation of the motor that goes with this particular speed controller. So anyway, I think I have all that pretty much set. Um, Again, to, to recap, basically, most cars, pretty much all cars, even boats, uh, require a two-channel radio system. So check that out. Uh, again, ready to runs, most likely it's included, uh, and almost ready to runs, and kits, you're, you're probably going to need to buy it separately. And I'll leave you with one final thought. Always run your antenna. So some receivers, they have an antenna like this one does. Uh, some of them don't. You don't need to worry about those, but if you do have a wire coming out of your receiver, run it over to the antenna mount, run it through the tube and make sure it's sticking up so that the radio can send its signals over to the receiver. So I hope this video helped you with your basic knowledge of how a radio system works. Now there's, there's actually a lot more involved in the radios. Uh, this particular radio here is a, is a mid-level model radio. Uh, so this has a computer screen here and uh, there's a bunch of tuning features inside. We're gonna get to that type of stuff in the future. Uh, but basic radio systems, they just involve a, a steering trim and a throttle trim and a reverse. Um, and I, I, again, I talked, that in, um, talked about that in, in episode number two. So if you missed that, check that out. It gives you a little bit of more detail there. Uh, so that's it, that's your radio system. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to RC, please hit that subscribe button so you could just follow all these uh, informational videos that we're gonna have coming out in our Get Into RC video series. It'll help you uh, get into RC with complete success. I'm totally sure of it. And uh, if you need any more information right now, please head over to rcdriver.com. We've got a site loaded with how-tos and reviews to help you with your RC experience.